I went from strict to strict door, strict. Understand? Only person I own is myself. Strict door. Yes, yes, people. Welcome back to my channel. Big strict door here. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, whatever it is that these other YouTubers tell you to do, but do it for me. I'm going to try my best right now not to be reactionary, to be calm, to be composed, to remember where we are in the league. We are top of the table with the youngest squad in the Premier League. We've improved our away record, we've improved our results against the top six teams or the top four teams, whatever. Um, what else is there? Um, we've also improved on beating the teams we're supposed to beat. You know, that, that actually gets um, underrated. You know, we actually beating teams we're supposed to beat and we're beating them comfortably. We are grinding out results. I remember the game against uh, Leeds away. You know, we won 1-0 at, at Ellen Road. Games like that, we are going through it now. We are coming through it on the other end. We're doing things different is what I'm trying to say. But why is it I get this familiar feeling when it comes to the transfer window? And particularly the January transfer window. Last season, we finished fifth. And you would argue that if we had made that little push... We might have got the top four. We might have got the top four. So that familiar, same old Arsenal feeling. You know, Mikel Arteta's done a great job. Edu, great job. But here, right now, January, you know, we need to make the next step. What day is it today? What, 14th of January? If you look our, at our um, competitors, they've all made signings. Liverpool, Liverpool's not a competitor, but they've made signings. Man United, they've made signings. See, you have a huge squad of players to choose from. But it's this familiar feeling that I'm getting, and it's not nice when we identify a player, our main target, but we can't seem to get the deal over the line. Whether it's Modric, whether it's uh, Vlavic, whether it's Eden Hazard, whether it's, it's, it's flipping... Uh, what's the guy? Gomerish at Newcastle. I, I don't understand it. I don't, honestly, I don't understand it. Um, right, I get it. We signed Pepe. We signed Pepe for a, a, a club record deal and that didn't go as we planned it to go. But, bro, look at those other teams. They spend money on players that don't work out. It's not always going to work out. We know that. The fact that Chelsea have overspent and sitting where they're sitting means spending money isn't always a solution. I get it. I get it. But what I'm saying is there comes a point where we are sitting where we are sitting, top of the table. And we need that extra, extra push. Just like last season. And we, never, and we never did it. Now, I don't care whether the player is Modric, flipping Messi, Neymar. I don't care who the player is. But if you say, this is the player we're going to get, we should be able to get the player. I used to think this never happened because we was usually sat somewhere fifth, sixth, and it was hard to negotiate, negotiate a deal. We are sitting top of the table. We are sitting top of the table. Why is this deal... Why? We've got the upper hand. We've got the negotiation negotiation hand. What the hell? Modric, I said in my last video, go and watch that. He was twerking to come to Arsenal. Every Instagram post, Arsenal, 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 Arsenal. To the point I said, you know what? He's being disrespectful to his club. But doesn't mean I didn't expect us to go out and get the deal because we've identified him. Listen, I trust the process. I trust it. And a bit of me is like, hmm, they've got, they've got something up their sleeve. And I hope they really have. But that familiar feeling is lodged in my chest. I won't lie to you. That familiar feeling is lodged in my chest. Now, look. Nobody expected us to be where we are. 
you will struggle to find an Arsenal fan who will tell you, come January 2023, Arsenal have the potential to be eight points clear of Pep's Man City. Eight points clear. Nine points clear of Man United. That's two games up on City and three games up on United come January, top of the table. And I also feel like the club itself didn't prepare for us to be where we are this current moment. So therefore, their budget and our reality are not aligned. They're still possibly still thinking about top four and maybe of four. Okay, you know what? Let's go for top four. Let's buy the players. Let's act like a club that's going for top four as opposed to a club that wants to win the league. We are top of the league. It's not coincidence. Just remember that. It's not luck, not co no, no coincidence. Everyone is where they are. We're coming up to the halfway point of the season. Nothing is coincidence. Liverpool are down where they are. Not coincidence. Because they're playing shit. We are where we are, like I said, because we're doing things different. So, has the club prepared themselves for a top four charge or for a title charge? And again, I have to state this. I am trusting the process. I'm hoping and I feel like they have something up their sleeve. Was Mudrick uh, 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 a smokescreen? I don't know. I don't know. Chelsea seem to be going out are hell-bent on stopping us winning the league. They're hell-bent on stopping us winning the league. They're signing our targets. It's not doing anything for them, but they don't care. We're not worried about Chelsea. We're not worried. About Chelsea's lead, they're, they're mid-table team right now. But there has to be a point where I want to see a difference. I want to see in a January transfer window when someone goes, hey, you know what? We could win the league if we did this and did that. Even if we bought Modric for 80, 90 million, he doesn't work out. Fuck it, we tried. We tried to win the league. Fuck it. But we are at a point now where we're not an injury away from blowing up. The whole season, everyone said, oh, you know, you, you, uh, if Jesus gets injured, we're fucked. Eddie's coming. Eddie's done his thing. Um, I remember the game against Nottingham Forest. Um... Uh, I think Saka went off injured. Um, Reese Nelson came on, done his thing. So it seems like the squad are working right now purely on motivation and togetherness and spirit. Right now, that's what we're working on. But now we are a booking away. It's not even an injury anymore. It's a booking away from fucking the whole thing off. If if Eddie Nketia collects a, right, a, a red card, we ain't got a striker. If any of our defenders uh, uh, co collect up the tally of five yellow cards, we are literally on bare minimum. Spirit alone cannot get us to where we need to get to. I don't think we will get another chance like this. We won't get another momentum like this. This has come out of the fucking blue. We need to do things different if we're going to achieve a different outcome. Yes, some people will say, yep. Yeah. Do you know, I'm not, if Modric don't come, yeah, because I'm seeing um, Fabrizio Romano and David Osteen reporting different things. Um, Fabrizio saying Arsenal are still in talks with Shakhtar. David Osteen is saying um, he's agreed a deal with Chelsea. These are two reputable um, sources in the transfer market. In, in football in general, these two. So they're both saying different things. But I'm already on the fuck Modric side of the things already. I am. I am. Let's move on. Let's not panic by. And this is why any other player we sign by not signing Modric will feel like a panic by because where's this come from? Do you understand? But again, that's where the trust the process comes in because whoever you bring in, I'm backing it 100% because so far we've done everything right. There's nothing you can look at and say, you know what? We haven't done this. We haven't, there's not everything so far has been way over what we expected. Our, we've, we've exceeded our expectations. 
to the point now, I don't want top four. I'm sorry, I do at the start of the season, yes, give me top four. But currently where we are sitting, it is criminal to be thinking and having a top four mentality. It is criminal. No other club, no other top four team sits where we are sitting and still talking about top four. And if Modric don't want to come, cool, fuck him. And if he wants people saying, oh yeah, f um fuck him if you know if he's he, if it's all about money. Bro, money. If it's all about money. Every player in the Premier League is there for the money. Every single player. Breaking news. Every single player. Every single person. You guys at home. Your workplace. If they're offering you more money, you go. That's how the fucking shit works. That's how economy, economy works. It's money. But this feeling of not identify, um, identifying a target and not being able to get over the line makes me sick. And I'm not trying to be reactionary because there's a lot of pluses. Like I said, the youngest squad in the Premier League. We are scoring goals from left, right and centre. Everyone's having an impact. Anyone who comes on is having an impact. You think of um, Vieira, he comes on, he scores. Literally, we there's a spirit. But bro, we're not fucking... Um, what are them people that deal with um, mediums? We can't just deal with spirit alone. They say, we can't deal with spirit alone. We need more. We need, it's the 14th of January. We need somebody in. Like I said, we're a yellow card away. And we've got a big game coming up tomorrow against Spurs. And we need to be focused. We need to be focused. Eight points clear. Not a, United beat City today. What a great motivation for us. What a great motivation for us. Anyway, I've said what i got to say. Please make sure you like, share, subscribe, like I said, whatever, whatever these other YouTubers tell you to do, but do it for me. I'm out.